Hey guys, I didn't see you there. Probably because I'm talking to a camera and you're in a completely different room watching this video, but that's not important right now. What's important is waves. And in particular, I want to talk about guitars. And even more particular, I want to talk about strings on guitars. So why do I want to talk about this guitar? Well, previously we've looked at resonance, and one of the specific examples that we looked at was standing waves on a string fixed at two ends. And it just so happens that I have about six of them here. Isn't that handy that I actually, I, I just happen to have this guitar on me at the time that I'm recording this? I'm kidding, I planned this. I brought the guitar with me on purpose. We know that the wavelength of a standing wave generated by a string fixed at both ends is determined by the length of the string. In particular, we at the very least need to have a node at the end on both sides. So when I pluck the string, it starts a wave here that travels down to this end, reflects back, and perfectly constructively interferes with itself to form that standing wave. The wavelength of the standing wave is twice the length of the string. So why is it the same sound every time I pluck it? Well, if you remember our formula for velocity equals frequency times wavelength, we can see that the velocity of the wave through the medium the string fixed at both ends, stays constant, and the wavelength, the length of the string, stays constant, well then the frequency has to stay constant as well, otherwise the formula doesn't work. So what happens if I shorten the wavelength? Say if I put a finger down on this fret here and play. Well we can see that the frequency changes. And why does it change? Because we shorten the wavelength, and if the velocity of the wave through this string stays the same, then the frequency has to change to compensate for the shortening wavelength, which means when we shorten the wavelength, we get a higher frequency. So if I have six strings here that are the same length, the waves generated by them would be the same wavelength, right? So why then does it sound different when I play this string and this string? Well, we can find the answer by looking at the velocity of the wave through the strings. Because if we remember, Velocity equals frequency times wavelength. If the wavelength stays the same and the frequency changes, then that means we must have a change in velocity of the wave. So why is the wave velocity different in these two strings? Well, it's because wave velocity depends on mass, tension, and length. So if we look at these strings, we can see in any given length of string here, we have a much thicker and heavier piece of string than if we took one from down here, where the string is much lighter. And in our equation for velocity of a wave through a string, a higher mass equals a lower velocity. Okay, 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 I think we've heard enough about mass. Let's talk about that tension thing again. Where do we get tension from in guitar strings? Well, have you ever seen someone sitting down, going to play guitar, and then doing this? It's very annoying, but it's useful. So when we look at the head of the guitar, we can see that these parts over here turn, and that causes this gear to turn, which causes these rods in here to turn and either tighten or loosen the string depending on which way they're wound. So if I pluck this string and I turn this, I'm changing the tension in the string per unit length. And as we've been discussing, that changes the velocity of the wave through the string, which changes the frequency of the note. So what we have in total is that the higher the mass of the string, 
the lower the velocity of the wave through that string, and therefore the lower the frequency if the wavelength is kept static. And additionally, the higher the tension of the string, the higher the note. And therefore, if we increase the tension, the note frequency increases as well.